Hi everyone, it's Victoria from Merlin's Vault and today I thought we would take a step back and actually go through what Lorcana is and some of the card specifics and potentially how you may want to play the game. So I'm going to be working with the cards from the newest set, which is, we opened this in a previous video, but it is Into the Inklands. So there is now going to be locations with the cards. And I don't want that to deter anyone from actually playing the game, but there are, so I thought let's start out with the basics of what the cards are. So I have just any card here. When you're looking at it, you're gonna wanna see this top number up here and that is going to tell you what it is going to take to get this card out so it's going to be two inks from there you're looking at these two numbers and the first one here is your strength for that character the second one is willpower so that's where you're going to be looking at if you want to challenge an opponent if this is a two or sorry one three you may not want to be challenging too much because you've only got the one, but she's potentially better as a defense. So maybe I will save her in doing that. And then there's the abilities down here. I also want to go through what each of these colors mean. So you do have six of them. And we're gonna start with, actually let's start with Sapphire. It's one of my favorites. And in previous, um, in previous boxes, there were things like Bell as a Tinkerer. And in Sapphire, these cards are very much knowledge, creativity, the inventors. You're gonna have a lot of artifacts that you want in your deck if you are running one with Sapphire in it. So there isn't a ton that comes out of Into the Inklands because the other two previous sets had quite a bit for, for Sapphire. But a few that I found, uh, that could be of note would be repair So in this one you're removing up to three damage from one of your locations or characters And then you've got an Aurelian gyrosphere, which is an item but these you're looking at is a lot of helping build up those items so you've got a few from this set. There's another one that's uh, Tinkerbell, the very clever fairy. So there are different versions of Tinkerbell, but this one in particular is, is great for your inventor tinkering deck, if you would call it that. But this one says whenever one of your items is banished, you may put that card into your inkwell face down exerted. So you're not just losing out on that item anymore. What that means is you're going to be taking that item, in this case, my gyro sensor, and I'm going to put it face down and exert it. But I would be able to use it next time as ink. You've got Pluto. He doesn't have any special abilities per se, but he definitely is a little tougher for this deck. So that's nice to have. And then you do have Bell's House, Maurice's Workshop. And if you have a character here, you pay one less ink um, to play items. So that, that's what the Sapphire is big about, is items. So next that we're going to go through is Steel. I have a fondness for this one as well too. Uh, this one is where you're going to get your strongest, most defensive characters out there. Uh, they're going to have things more like brute force. Uh, they're going to be very protective of their other allies. So this one I was kind of thinking about running simultaneously with the sapphire because you are going to want the two colors. Um, we did happen to pull the big one, Robin Hood, Champion of Sherwood, in our opening for Into the Inklands. So as you can see, while he does cost five, he does have a willpower of six, so it's not gonna be real easy to get him off the board. And he is able to do quite a few things. So he's got shift three, things like skilled combatant and the good of others. That makes it so he's very helpful in your deck. Um, there are some of the titans that came into play, and one of them would be uh, Lithos. So it's got a resist plus two. It can also choose a character to gain resist plus two on your turn. 
so it's helping out the others while it may not be as much willpower it definitely is an aggressor at four Simba is always one of those he's going to be very high powered when he's in his teenage and adult years eras sorry adult years uh, he's typically in steel because of that he is pretty darn tough so he is seven it's gonna take a little bit to get him out but when you do he's not going anywhere so he has step down or fight when you play this card and whenever he banishes another card in a challenge during your turn you get to do one of the following which would be either deal two damage to a chosen character or you draw two cards and then choose whichever two cards you want to discard so just adding some more insult to injury there from um, Treasure Planet. So she's a two, which is not bad to have considering if you are running a few Simbas, it's gonna take a while to get those out. But she's got bodyguards. So while there are some bodyguards in the Amber, there are going to be some in Steel too. And they're typically a little bigger. There's another Simba, Rightful King, and this time he's a four six, and it's five to get out places like that. Um, even Nottingham has a six toughness. Uh, the new song that's pretty big from this set is And Then Along Came Zeus. So a character with cost of four or more can sing this song for free. You deal five damage to chosen character or location. That's big. Especially if you've got something, the other locations are not typically as big as six. There's a gizmo suit, which is Kind of fun. You can banish the item um, and chosen character gains resist plus two until the start of your next turn. And then there's Little John and the reason why I pulled out this one was just to show that there is another bodyguard within this new set. Okay so moving on we've done Amethyst and Steel. We're going to move to Emerald, which was one that I felt was quite lacking from the previous sets. There just weren't as many cards, and it was a little tricky to figure out what exactly the strategy for it was. But what it is, it's like a rubber band. It is a little chaotic with what it's trying to do, but it is going to be the disruptor of the game. So it'll have cards that will say, you have to pick that back up like your opponent does or your opponent has to discard X number of cards. It's just there to change the gameplay, to make things a little turned around on the, the, the field. So this one um, gives you a bit more control over your table and gameplay with it. I think it would be rather fun. It's not typically played quite as much as some of the others, but I think I think it's working its way back up. So you've got things from this new set like Morph the Space Goo. So while he's a 2-1 and he only costs two to get out, he's got Mimicry. So you may play any character with shift on this character as if this character had any name. So it, and that, that's great. So it just becomes basically almost whatever you need in that case. You've got Cursed Merfolk. So whenever this character is challenged, each opponent chooses and discards a card. So again, just putting it out there, changing up the gameplay. People are working on their strategies and in comes Emerald and is just trying to destroy all of that. Prince John, he collects taxes. <laughs> <laughs> obviously but whenever this character quests each opponent with more lore than you loses to lore so he's a sore loser <laughs> but again if you are not doing great and you're needing a step up definitely play him and get him out there so you can potentially change the game and win uh, I will find my way Cho chosen character of yours gets a plus two toughness this turn or strength this turn, they may move to a location for free. So again, you're just moving pieces around on the board, well it's just the table, that normally other colors aren't able to do. So there's just, there's plenty more from this set. We've got a new Ursula that's out, we've got Skippy from Robin Hood, he's got Ward, um, Cubby, he gets to move to a location and then 
he gets some um, he gets plus three to his strength there. So there's there's a lot of fun ones to play with emerald, and I'm working on building a deck potentially with those. The other one that has always been pretty heavy on cards between all of the sets is Amber. So Amber is all about the kind of patience and dedication of building up your board to it. It's not gonna be as fast acting as say Ruby, but it is much more community based for what all your gameplay is. So these characters and items are going to be helping each other, building each other up to do what else they need to do. They're there's other cards that are much more solo, but Amber is all about other people. So you will see some bodyguard cards in here as well too, like in Steel, but they're gonna work slightly differently. There are also going to be some healers in Amber as well too. So there's Amber and Sapphire have been pretty big together, um, but I, I thought these are pretty cool. There's less healers in this set, I would say, but there's a lot of bodyguards that come into play. So the first three that I hold, which would be Pluto Determined Defender, Joshua Sweet the Doctor, and Minnie Mouse Musical Artist. So all of these have bodyguard on them, meaning that they're going to remove damage from other players in the case of Minnie Mouse. But in Joshua Sweet, he, if this character may interplay exerted, an opposing character who challenges one of your characters must choose one with bodyguard if able. So it's just pulling them to specific areas that you want and keeping the focus away from some other characters, which can be really great, in particular with this Pluto and uh, Joshua Sweet, because their willpower is an eight and a five. So it's pretty difficult to beat then. So you're saying, hey, you have to leave my little guys alone and come after my big one. Like, like bodyguards. <laughs> uh, you've got some action items that are also with Amber. And one of those is heal what has been hurt. So you get to remove up to three damage from a chosen character and then draw a card. Which is very helpful. We like to draw cards in card games. We make everything easier. Again, another item is Cleansing Rainwater. So if you banish this item, you get to remove up to two damage from each of your characters. That's huge, and it only costs two. I think that's a big deal. Um, 99 Puppies, there's a lot of Dalmatian cards in this set as well, and there's three in particular. Dalmatian Puppy, Patch, and 99 Puppies, and a lot of them are helping reduce uh, strength of other like opponents or they're helping you gain more lore. It's just very community based. Let's all help each other out is the idea behind the Amber. So now we're going to get into the two that have been the most competitive. I'm not saying they're necessarily the best. It, again, I think you should go off of what kind of play style do you like and then start choosing your cards from there. So, we've got Amethyst. Amethyst is all about our spell casters, all the magical, so you're gonna have a lot of magical items in here. Everyone that does spells in the previous set, Rise of the Floodborn, we had all of those Merlin cards where when he turned into all the different animals, and then the Madame Mim. So those have been some big staples in these Ruby Amethyst decks. With this new one, the big location that a lot of people were looking for is the Queen's Castle Mirror Chamber. It's got a willpower of seven, and at the start of your turn, for each character you have here, you may draw a card. It's awesome. Again, we've got certain colors are going to be ones that draw a lot of cards, and Amethyst is definitely one of those, so you'll see a lot of drawing cards in here. You've got the Lamp from Aladdin, good or evil, Banish this item. If you have a character named Jafar in place, draw two cards. If you have a character named Genie in play, return chosen character with cost four or less to their player's hand. It's just like, nope, remove that. So you can use the lamp if you were wanting to do Jafar, which has been a big one to use, or you can start using it with the Genie now. Again, you've got some flying carpets. 
that is going to have evasive. You've got Magic Broom, and in previous sets, there is the Mickey as the spellcaster, and he's got a card, or one of his abilities has to do with brooms, so this could be fed into there as well when he's the sorcerer. And we actually have his location now with the sorcerer's tower. There's quite a few of Magicka Dispel in different versions. So there's the Midas Touch, Ambitious Witch, and Thieving Sorceress. She's got all sorts of different powers and different um, abilities within here. I mean, the biggest one for her is a seven, and you can't even use this as ink because it doesn't have the little special circle around it. But this one, shift for five and then has the ability of all mine so whenever this character quests you gain lore equal to the cost of one of your items in play could be pretty cool if you got some big old items there she's doing some stuff as well you've got ursula again she's a big staple within uh amethyst she's got a new one which is sea witch right after she transforms from being the almost bride. <laughs> so whenever this character quest chosen opposing character can ready at the start of their next turn. That's cool. So I think that pretty much goes through Amethyst. And then last but not least is Ruby. So Ruby is where you're going to get a lot of your aggression coming from. These are going to be characters that have evasive, they're going to move quickly, they're going to want to do damage fast, and they have rush a lot of the time. So rush is they don't come in tapped. In magic we would say summoning sickness, but rush they just go right in and they're going to start doing damage. So you'll have a lot of stitch cards within there. Uh, Peter Pan is a big staple from this set for it, and Maui has a few cards as well. There's two Peter Pan cards that are both in Ruby. You've got Pirate's Bane and Neverland Hero. So one, you've got Shift and Evasive, and the other one's got Rush. So if you've got Evasive, only characters with Evasive can challenge that character, which does make it very difficult. And not only that, but in this case of Peter Pan Pirate's Bane, He's a four five. So it's gonna be a little tricky if someone doesn't have evasive. So you might want to think even though you don't have Ruby in your deck, you might want to consider, but if I play someone that does, do I have an evasive in here that could help me get them off the board or some sort of board clearing card strategy? Yes. So there's I thought this one was fun. You've got Dive Bomb this time, so it's Iago there. And he can banish one of your characters with Reckless to banish Chosen character with less strength than that character. And then, it's not a big card, but I just really like Stitch. <laughs> it's my play mat. Uh, Stitch Little Rocket, so he's got Rush. And in this case, He's a 3-1, so he's not going to be your defensive line. That's not typically how um, some of the Ruby cards are. They're typically higher aggressors. There are some exceptions to this. So there are always exceptions to all of these different colors, but that was just a brief breakdown of how you would want to potentially Think about how you're going to do your deck. So I would start with is what kind of deck am I wanting to do? Am I wanting to be someone who's controlling the board and the, the movement and the pieces on there? Am I wanting someone who comes out hard and attacks and I want to be the aggressor? Am I wanting someone who's going to be let's build up my characters and I want a lot of items and action items? Are you going to want somebody that's very defensive and there's going to be a lot of brute force behind them or they're not doing a lot of special abilities they're just coming at you hard so there's a lot of questions to answer when first starting Lorcana and your deck building but I think starting with what is the play style that you are wanting is the best place to start that way you can determine what two colors you're going to be going after and then picking your cards from there. Because there are a lot of fun characters and 
if you're like me, you get some of the nostalgia feels and you get excited over your favorite characters. But that doesn't necessarily mean that those are the characters you should be playing. And they could be in three different colors or all the different colors and you're not gonna be able to run all that together. So picking your colors first, I think is, is where you should be starting. And then you can pick the fun cards from there. And if you just want the fun card, just because you can have that. <laughs> but let me know what decks you are running. What is your favorite color combination? And what characters are you still looking for them to put out? This has been Victoria with Merlin's Vault. Thanks.